final video in the Science of Matter unit is on the Law of Observation of Mass. And we just have one learning target for this video. We want to be able to state and apply the Law of Conservation of Mass. The Law of Conservation of Mass is about atoms and chemical change. It basically tells us that all matter is made of atoms and that chemical change involves one of three things. Atoms are either combined, they're separated, or they're rearranged. Those are the only three things that can happen. In other words, no atoms are created or destroyed in chemical reactions. So a statement of what the law of conservation of mass is says that matter is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. In other words, what we would determine or what we would observe if we were trying to prove the law of conservation of mass would be that the mass of the reactants has to equal the mass of the products. So if we carefully measure all the reactants to start with, and then we perform our reaction, we make sure we collect all the products, and we carefully measure every bit of product, we'd find that they were the same. This statement does not include nuclear processes. Uh, in a nuclear process, matter actually is destroyed. If you know the famous equation from Einstein, E equals mc squared, that's, a, that's the relationship between the mass that gets destroyed in a nuclear reaction and the energy that's created because of it. Uh, for our purposes, we don't have to worry about that. We'll just deal with, with basic chemical reactions and the law of conservation of mass will always be held. Here's an example of applying the law of conservation of mass. We're told that 18.02 grams of water are separated by electrolysis into its component gases. Now recall that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. If 16 grams of oxygen gas are obtained, what mass of hydrogen gas must be obtained? So here is a basic equation for the reaction. Now I wouldn't expect that you'd be able to write this equation at this point, uh, but we know that H2O is water. And notice the two elements that make it up are hydrogen and oxygen. And we're told that this reaction is going to separate the water into its component gases, that being hydrogen and oxygen gases. The reason it's H2 and O2, not just H and O, is because both of those elements are diatomic, meaning they exist as two atoms in one molecule, not as individual atoms. That's really not pertinent to this problem, though. So what we're told is we're, we start with 18.02 grams of water, and then we collect 16.00 grams of oxygen. And we want to know how much hydrogen gas is also there. Well, we know that the hydrogen has to account for the rest of the water uh, that wasn't accounted for by the oxygen. If we started with 18.02 grams, we have to end with 18.02 grams. Notice this arrow here separates our reactants and products. So whatever mass we have on the left side has to equal the mass on the right side in total. Well, obviously we're short on the right side, so if we just find the difference, uh, the difference being 2.02 grams, that would tell us the mass of hydrogen that we would need. Here's a practice problem. We're told that iron reacts with oxygen to form ferrous oxide or rust. Suppose 55.85 grams of iron react with 24.00 grams of oxygen. What mass of rust must form? So in this reaction, we have two reactants. We're told iron reacts with oxygen, so we just write iron plus oxygen. Notice we don't necessarily have to write the formulas or the symbols, we can just write the words. And then we only get one product here, that's rust. Notice the arrow separates reactants from products. So the mass on the left side that we have has to equal the mass on the right side. We're told that we have 55.85 grams of iron and it reacts with 24 grams of oxygen. So this total, if we were to add up 55.85 and 24, that has to equal the mass of rust that we would get. If we add them up, that would give us 69.85 grams. That should be the mass of rust that's collected in this reaction. And that's all for this video.